So in this example, we're told we have a power cycle, and it's following this sort of triangular shape. So we have a PV diagram right here. So we start at state one, and then we go down to state two here, then from two to three that way, and then three to back to one. So it's, so it's undergoing a cycle. We're given the pressures at each of the states, and we're given the volumes at each of the states. We're also told the difference in the internal energy for process one, two, and the heat transfer into the uh, system uh, for process three to one. And we're also told that there are no changes in kinetic or potential energy. And so we're trying to find the work for each process, the heat transfer per, for processes one, and one to two and two to three, and then the thermal efficiency. So let's get started. First of all, we're told it's a gas and a piston cylinder. So we'll just draw our cylinder. Here's the piston. We'll say that the gas is here, and the gas is our system of interest. And there's some heat transfer going into it, and we're doing some work on the surroundings. Okay, let's find the work for each process. So this is going to be boundary work or PDV work, and the work in general for PDV work looks like this. So we're going to find, first of all, the work for process uh, let's let's start with the easy one first. Let's do from three to one. From three to one, the volume remains constant, so we know that that work is going to be zero. And that's because delta V three to one is zero. There is no change in the volume, so if you imagine you had the same value for the volume on the limits of the integral, then the integral would just be zero. So that's the easy one. Let's go ahead and do process one to two now. So there we would have this integral from volume one to volume two, PDV. We would need to write out how the volume changes with, I'm sorry, how the pressure changes with volume. You can see it's linear here. So one way you can solve this problem is you could write out the pressure as the equation of a line so it might look something like this. Let me write it this way. Um, let me write it out and then I'll explain it. Okay, so one way we could solve for the work in going from one to two is I could do this integral I have to write down how the pressure varies with volume. It varies linearly, so it looks like the equation of a line. So this is the equation of a line, and all I did was write down how the pressure varies, and then you know I put um, my starting point pressure P1 right there. That would be the five bar or five kilopascal. Sorry, this is the slope of that line, just how the pressure changes over the change in volume, and then this is the how the volume changes. And then V1 would be the one cubic meter. P2 here would be the three kilopascals. P1 we said was five kilopascals. V2 is five cubic meters. And again, V1 is one cubic meter. So we could, we could do this, plug in for P and then evaluate the integral. That's kind of tedious. You can do it and you'll get the right answer, but it's tedious. The easier way to go is just to do it geometrically here since we're dealing with straight lines. So keep in mind that the work on a PV diagram is just the area underneath the path. So it's this area that I'm shading in right here. So that's an easier calculation to do in this particular case because we're dealing with just a, essentially like a, a trapezoid here, right? So in that case, I can just write the work from one to two. It'll be this average pressure here times, so it's kind of like doing this area that I'm drawing in, in blue there. So it would be one half five kilopascals plus three kilopascals times the delta V, which would be five cubic meters minus one cubic meter in this case, right? And then uh, if we work out the numbers of, for that, it'll come out to be, and, do, and also do the unit conversions, it'll come out to be 16 kilojoules. Okay, so hopefully I got the numbers right there. Okay, so that's how we do the work from uh, one to two. 
let me erase my mess up here. So now we're going to do the work from 2 to 3. That's this one. And we'll just do it the same way. Again, you can, and one way to do it is to write out the integral and write out the pressure as a function of volume and then do the integration. But that's kind of tedious. You can do it and it'll be fine. But instead, I'm just going to find the area underneath the, the line here. Now, one thing you have to be careful of in this case is we're going to the left on the plot. So that's going to give us a negative amount of work. So geometrically, this one will be the following. It's going to be negative. Take the average of the pressures. So that'll be 3 kilopascal plus 1 kilopascal. And then, you know what? Uh, let me let me write this differently. I'm, just, I'm going to just do the pressure and then I'll do the change in volume. The change in volume in this case is 1 cubic meter minus 5 cubic meters. This is where the negative will come into play. I just did, this is, this is what I've written here is just delta V. Right, it's the same kind of thing up here. This is delta V as well. And in this case, up here, when we went from 1 to 2, the delta V was the 0.2's volume, which is 5 cubic meters, minus volume 1, which is 1 cubic meter. So that's what, why we have a positive there. And we're going from left to right. There should probably be some arrows on this. In this case, from 2 to 3, it's going to the left. So it's the volume will be volume 3, which is 1 cubic meter, minus volume 2, which is 5 cubic meters. So that'll make it negative. So the work from 2 to 3 will come out to be minus 8 kilojoules if I did everything correctly. So those are all of my works. So that's that gives me part A. I check that part off. Now we're asked to find the heat transfer for processes 1 and 2 and 2 to 3. We're not doing 3 to 1 because it's given. Okay, so let's do process 1 to 2. The way we're going to find the heat transfer is we're going to apply the first law. So the change in total energy as we go from 1 to 2 is the heat transfer into from 1 to 2 minus the work done by the system from 1 to 2. And the change in total energy is going to be the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. If we go 1 to 2, these we were told to neglect. That was given in the problem statement. And the delta 1, 2 is actually given in the problem statement as well. It's given as 15 kilojoules. So let's write that down. So this is going to be 15 kilojoules because it's given. That's U2 minus U1. The work from 1 to 2, we just calculated moments ago, is 16 kilojoules. So then we can solve for the Q into 1 to 2. That'll be what? Uh, 16 plus 15 is 31 kilojoules. So that gives us the heat transfer from 1 to 2. All right, so then let's go ahead and do the heat transfer from 2 to 3. Now, the heat transfer from 2 to 3, we're not given what the heat trans we're not we're not given the delta u from 2 to 3. So we're going to have to take a different approach to find that one. Okay? So the way I'm going to handle that is I'm going to uh, I'm going to make use of the fact that I'm operating over a cycle here. Okay, so remember that um, since we're operating over a cycle, if I apply the first law, let me write this down. So we're operating over a cycle, and since we're operating over a cycle, the change in the total energy is going to be zero because we're starting at one state and we're coming right back to it. So that means the Q into over the cycle will equal the work done by the system over the cycle. Now the work done by the system over the cycle will just be the work by 1, 2 plus the work done by it 2 to 3 plus the work done by it from 3 to 1. And we can do the same thing for the heat transfer. It'll be heat transfer into 1 to 2, plus the heat transfer into 2 to 3, plus the heat transfer into 3 to 1. Now, we've already calculated all of these, right? So this is, we said, from 1 to 2 was 16 kilojoules. 
2 to 3 was minus 8 kilojoules. And 3 to 1 we said was 0. So the right-hand side here will be, what, 8 kilojoules total. And then on the left-hand side, we just calculated 1 to 2 as being 31 kilojoules. We're given 3 to 1, right? If you go back up into the problem statement, Q 3 to 1 is 10 kilojoules. So then we can solve for Q 2, 3. Right, so if we do that, um, let me look at that. 41 minus, okay, so that should come out to be minus, I think, 33 kilojoules. So instead of heat going in from 2 to 3, it actually is coming out since it's a negative value. Okay, so that's how we found, find the heat transfer from 2 to 3, just applying the first law over a whole cycle and then using some previously calculated and some given values. All right, so going back up here, we now finished part B. Now the last part of the problem, the thermal efficiency for this power cycle, this is a power cycle, by the way, because you can see that we're moving in a clockwise direction here, which means that there's going to be a net amount of work coming out of that cycle. You can see that down here. Here's our net work when we add all those up comes out to be a positive value. That means we're getting work out of the cycle. So it's a, a power cycle. We're generating some work. So to find the thermal efficiency, that's defined as being the net work done by the cycle. Actually, let me switch the order of that. So the, the net work coming out of the whole cycle divided by the amount of heat transfer into over the cycle. Let me change net. Let me just call it over the cycle. So we already calculated the total work. Let me just rewrite it here. That's just adding up all the works. Right? And we know that that's 8 kilojoules because we just calculated it a moment ago. Now the heat transfer going in this is not the net heat transfer. It's not, it, it is not adding all these together. Instead, what it is is just the heat transfer where it's actually just going in. Now, if you look at these here, it, it's going in from 1 to 2 because that's a positive value. So let me put that in here, Q, 1, 2. And then it's also going in from 3 to 1 because that's a positive value. So Q, 3 to 1. So let me write those down. That's 31 kilojoules plus 10 kilojoules. And we don't include the 2 to 3 because that's negative. So it's not going into. It's You're only, in the denominator here, you're only counting the heat that you're putting into the control volume or into the, the, the system. It's kind of like this picture here where we had a hot reservoir. We talked about this in lecture. Here's our system. Here's the QC coming out. Here's our cold reservoir. And there's the work that we've generated. This Q down here is this QH. It's the, the heat coming into our system. So it's just coming in from 1 to 2 and 3 to 1. Right? Those are the, the ones that have positive values. The QC here is this Q23 because it's negative. It means it's coming out of our system. In this, in this case, our system is the, the circle. Right. But the work that we're getting out, that's the net amount of work. It's what we, we add the whole thing up. Maybe I should just put net here. Okay, so anyway, we can take this 8 kilojoules, divide through by, what is that, 41 kilojoules. And when you do that calculation, this comes out to be 0.195. So the efficiency is 19.5%, if you like to express it as a percentage. You could also express it just as a decimal. Either way is fine. So that's how we find the thermal efficiency. So the key thing with the thermal efficiency is just to remember the definition and keep in mind that this is the network. It's so all the works. And this, but the heat here is just the, the heat coming into the system. So it's just, in this case, from 1 to 2 and 3 to 1 because those are the only positive values. The rest of the problem, just as a recap, is just standard stuff you've been doing all along in the course, PDV work, and then applying the first law. The only one that might be a little bit tricky here is knowing 
to try applying the first law over the cycle and then knowing that the change in the total energy over the cycle is zero. Okay, so now we've done everything in the problem, so we'll go ahead and end it there.